Welcome to the Industry Experts Panel at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. My name is Michelle Holliday. Today, we are excited to be welcoming back to the show, Mr. Bill Murphy. Bill is one of the biggest names in precious metals. He is the chairman, the director, and the founder of GATA.org. GATA, G-A-T-A, stands for Gold Antitrust Action Committee. GATA was founded to both fight against and to expose the price manipulation within the precious metals markets, including both silver and gold. Bill has been very outspoken throughout the years about where the prices of precious metals should be, and yet they still continue to stay very much controlled by the financial powers behind the scenes. So today we are going to be talking about who is pulling the strings behind the curtain. Bill, welcome back to the show. How are you today? Hey, Michelle, you look great, and thanks for the introduction, but I must include my colleague, Chris Powell, the Secretary of Treasurer, who does a lot of the work, or most of the work, and he's been, he was the founder, along with me, way back in uh, 1998, 1999. 1998, 1999. Yeah, you and Chris really were one of the founders of the people that are really yelling now, you know, what is going on? So we want to start right there with the very constrained precious metals prices. Bill, who is pulling the strings from your perspective? Well, it's a great way to start off, Michelle. I mean, it's, we call I call it the gold cartel, and it's the uh, the Fed, the Treasury, the Bank for International Settlements, other central banks, and the bullion banks in the U.S. like J.P. Morgan, and they've been uh, behind the rigging of the gold and silver prices since I st we started this so long ago. You know, I want to also talk about the topic of Basel III, Bill, because there was a lot of speculation throughout the month of June that Basel III was going to make a big, big difference because what it was supposed to do was stop the manipulation of paper trading. But it looks like that has been deferred until January 2023. So I'd like for you to talk first about what Basel III is. Will it make a difference? And will it actually take effect in January of 2023? Well, it's great. A little bit complicated, but uh, the essence of it is pretty simple. And basically, they changed the, uh, the central banks and the, the banking industry was forced or decided to uh, try to do what they could to cut down on the unallocated gold positions versus the allocated, which that means, what that means is that when people buy stuff from certain institutions, they, the, the people that sell it to them put it in an unallocated account, which means they don't actually own that particular gold, but they own it in theory or on paper. So it really cuts way down on the demand. So theoretically, the idea was that the June 28th, that this was all going to start to change. And the, for the Bank of England, it would be the beginning of the year. But for other central banks and other countries, it would start June 28th. The only thing I got right all year, I said, I can't imagine what I call the gold cartel allowing this to come off like people think. I said it all year long. And three weeks into this thing, the price of gold collapsed like $150. It's, it's just ridiculous. It's what they do. It's a perfect example of something that Rightfully so, should be bullish, where people have they have to actually purchase the gold for individuals versus just putting it into account number. Uh, an, an example of that of how this works: years ago, Morgan Stanley got fined millions of dollars by the U.S. government for telling people that they owned silver that they didn't own. I mean, in other words, they people bought silver; they just said you own it, but they didn't actually buy the physical silver itself. They just gave them credit for it. So that is all supposed to be in change, and I think it will over time. But in the meantime, we have this, the most fundamentally bullish situation in gold silver history, and gold has, co has collapsed since the beginning of the year, and silver just does nothing at 26, no matter what. Right. <laughs> you can't make oh, it move. <laughs> yeah, 26, 26, 26. You can hear J.P. Morgan chanting when it's above 26 or below 26. So that the other people, Jenna, goes to 26 and then does nothing. It's been this way for most of the year. If people look at a chart, you can see it's 26. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's, 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 with the uh, fundamentals so bullish in terms of what, 
what's happening out there. It's really tough for people to deal with, and they're taking it out in the shares. People are giving up, unfortunately. Yeah, and, you know, for people who are into cryptos, that's so volatile. And then when they look at precious metals, they say, well, there's nothing there. I mean, it just sits there and sits there and sits there, and it's almost unbelievable. It really is, you know. Well, you're exactly right, and that's what's getting people so frustrated, and in my case, angry. <laughs> I'm angry with <laughs> Bill Murphy every day. I <laughs> see what's going on. I mean, today's a perfect example. You've got the yields, treasury yields going lower, it's supposed to be bullish for gold. They really went down sharply today. The dollar was down 0.40. It really tanked badly. Two very bullish items. So gold runs up to 1818 and then collapses to 1793. It's in it, silver, of course, it's 26 plus or minus no matter what happens. It's just, it's the most absurd thing of all time. And they, the, this gold cartel, as I call it, has been added so much, as you mentioned, that they're getting people discouraged that are just quitting. They don't want to be in gold and silver anymore or the shares, which are in terrible shape. Right, right. You know, I want everyone to understand what GATA is, Bill. So I'd like for you to break it down for anyone that's not familiar with your organization. I mentioned briefly at the top of the show, it stands for the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. And your organization has actually done some incredible things. GATA actually sued the United States government and um, also the United States Treasury, the Federal Reserve, not just once, but multiple times. And this is huge news, but no one ever talks about this. So take us through the steps of that. First, talk to us about when it was founded, um, who founded it, of course, yourself and uh, Chris, but um, take us through the steps. Well, as you said, 1999, early early in the year, January, February, we founded Gata with some other good people, and we've had some great supporters over the years, like Eric Sprott and Hugo Salinas Price and some big names. And uh, we've had four international conferences in Dawson City up north, and then and we had one in uh, uh, Washington. We've had one uh, in London. Uh, we had another one in the beginning in in Durban, South Africa. And uh, we've been to Washington many times. You said we've had different lawsuits. We had superstars like a fellow named Reg Howard, a Harvard guy who sued the whole kit and caboodle of them. You don't get very far with these people, unfortunately, when to sue them because the government's behind it. It's why the Commodity Futures Trading Commission was supposed to regulate this stuff, doesn't do anything. No matter how much, you know, I've been down to Washington to meet them and, and we've We've done all kinds of things over the last two decades. Nothing changes. Worst of all is the press won't even mention. In the beginning, they would mention God. Now they're not even allowed to mention our name. No matter what we do, they won't. We, Chris Powell sent it to them. They won't print it. Uh, they talk about what's going on in the gold and silver markets. They never mention the manipulation or suppression, no matter what happens. It's such a big deal that they won't go there. And, uh, uh, again, it's infuriating, but, you know, we learn to live with it. That's the way it is. And it'll probably be like all the other scandals with the big ones that blew up, like the Madoff and Enron. People complained and complained about it. Nothing changed. And then when they blew up, oh, what a big scandal they were. <laughs> what a big surprise. Yeah, what a big surprise. <laughs> yeah. And then J.P. Morgan is fined, as you mentioned, millions of dollars, which, of course, is substantial, but not to J.P. Morgan. To no, they, that was nothing. That was they, purely worth what they did. They keep doing the same thing. $920 million last year for rigging these markets. They went right back to do, they're doing the same thing. And, it, it, and, and it's, it's part of the way they do business. Uh, how many, you can look up J.P. Morgan and financial scandals and this and that, and it, they get, get mentioned like every two months. <laughs> you know, I want to stay on this fact that you sued the Federal Reserve because this is so incredible and no one talks about it. And, you know, who defended the Federal Reserve against price manipulation? What was their defense and what was the outcome? Well, you know, we, we had some recognition by one of the Fed people that admitted what some of the stuff uh, we said was correct. And the, we actually were given a, an award of, I don't know, it was something like $3,000 for something that the Fed said was, uh, uh, was incorrect. Uh, so we got some acknowledgement in, in the suit, but 
basically, you know, you're, when you're going against, as I mentioned, the government itself, they won't, they don't allow it to proceed because it's what they do. And it doesn't matter whether it's Republicans or Democrats, it's all the money behind the scenes that's doing it. So we, you know, we didn't get too far. We did get some satisfaction. $3,000? Well, in admission that the, that what we sued was, one of the things that we sued them for was correct. And one of the things was correct. Oh, <laughs> how interesting. So we, got, we got something, but it was more like a token. Uh, right. Uh, it was token. sort of like an acknowledgement that you were here and you may have something to it next. Right. Um, <laughs> now, you mentioned politics and we have to go there. What has the Biden administration's um, influence and impact been upon the precious metals industry overall? Well, it's a great question. As I mentioned, it really didn't matter. I mean, you've got you've got money, you know, being injected into the system like never before in history, whether it was under Trump or Biden. Uh, uh, during Trump's reign, I mean, the deficits went bananas. I mean, it, and the Republicans didn't say a thing. Now that Biden's in there and he's throwing all sorts of money into the system and the Republicans don't like it. I mean, that's normal politics. But what I can say is that if you look at the fundamental reasons for gold and silver to blow up, which they will eventually, it, it couldn't be more bullish. I mean, you couldn't invent a more bullish circumstances than what's been going on. And it's only because of the suppression and the manipulation by the people I mentioned earlier that's prevented to do so. How is it ever going to change? Your, your, uh, your watchers and listeners might ask. They're going to run out of enough physical supply to keep up with their paper shenanigans. In other words, they keep hitting the paper market and they have enough physical supply to carry out what they're doing. Um, if I may, every single day this year, but five or 10, we've had what I call bombs away in the gold market. Gold will be up, and then all of a sudden, often right after the COMEX opens around, it, boom, straight down. <laughs> Every single thing. It happened today. Once again, you had all these bullish things happen. Gold was breaking out, making new recent highs, straight down. Could there not be, and by the way, I, I mentioned this because President Trump has just filed a lawsuit against the major um, communications companies as far as social media goes, um, Google, Twitter, all of them. So it's, a, it's an impossible looking huge lawsuit. And yet, and yet he filed it. What if there was a class, could there be a class action suit against the people that are manipulating the gold and silver prices, not specifically the Federal Reserve, because I understand when it comes to government, you don't get any place. But if J.P. Morgan has already been proven and admitted to manipulation, does that not open them up to a lawsuit when something is so obvious as this? Yeah, it should. But there's been a number of lawsuits and there are people in this suit process right now. And again, having done this not for two years, but two decades. You just run into a brick wall when you go there. Like you mentioned earlier, you have Morgan pay this huge fund. They go right back to doing what they do. <laughs> it doesn't change. And it's like there's no sheriff in town. That's supposed to be the CFTC or the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. They're supposed to regulate this. Up. That's part of the government. The people, it's, it's unbelievable how sinister it is. And it doesn't change. That's why, in my opinion, again, after two decades of doing this, it will all change when they when they run out of enough physical supply, and I think they're going through it to to meet what I call these paper bombing raids. With everybody who follows this stuff sees what they do every day, and it's called in the open it's called the open interest on, on the on the COMEX where the paper markets are traded, and they just come in and bomb the market, and it affects the physical market because people see that every time they buy something, they think it's a good deal. Boom! Right down. <laughs> it drops. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if people are just getting nervous. And like you said earlier, they're going into other assets. And uh, until today, it's only one day. I mean, it's one all time high after another in the stock markets. And yet gold and silver just can't get out of their own way. Talk to us about that affiliation, because that's very interesting. 
that these all-time highs are taking place that seem to be manipulated also, but they're incredible highs, while precious metals are staying very, very low. What's the mentality on that? <laughs> well, I mean, the general public naturally loves it. You know, they have their money in, 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 the, in the stock market. And they, they couldn't be happier to see it go higher every day. And that's what the government wants. And as you, if you're talking about the Biden administration or any administration, they would say, look at the stock market. We're doing great. Uh, that's what they want, and where well, they have what they call the, like the plunge protection team behind the scene, where they can come in and, and again in the futures market or even in in the ETFs or the real market can buy up shares to goose the prices higher. So you've got the government on one side boosting the stock market, and you got the, another group in the government, you know, tamping down, tapering down the gold silver prices. I mean. Again, I, I, <laughs> I mentioned it earlier, but if you look at silver, it's, no matter what happens, silver is trading 26, plus or minus. No matter what happens. Right. <laughs> That's the price. That's you the know, price. you mentioned the plunge protection team. You know, when I first heard that term, it was hard for me to believe that that was actually real. But that is actually, it's really part of our government. And they literally go in and buy shares to make themselves look good. And then, like you mentioned, Biden comes out and says, we're doing fantastic. Look at the stock market. When in reality, everyone knows that's what's been happening in the past several months. You know, oh, jobs are at a high. Jobs are not at a high. Not when you shut down many, many industries and block them. And then you're just doling out money, which is digital money. They're not printing money. It's digital money. And many times it does not end up. These trillions of dollars do not end up in people's accounts. They end up somewhere else, which is a very interesting phenomenon. When, when he's saying, I just gave everyone trillions and trillions, American people are going, where? Who? Right? Well, that's in, in many cases, that's correct. And, it, you know, there's what they call these repos and operations is it's, it's money again pushed into the system which is it's taking the stock prices up and if anything again it's what this is the most bullish fundamentals i've ever seen in 50 years for the gold and silver markets but price action makes market commentary and because they keep sitting on it knocking it down i can't even read the gold silver market commentaries anymore because again all of a sudden inflation now is bearish for gold right <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's crazy, but if that's the way it is, and you got to deal with it, and we've got to get through this very tough period, and when the physical market dries up on the bad guys, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, gold and silver will explode, and I can't tell you when that's going to be, and nobody I know can either. That's really interesting, too. At one point, they were really talking about a shortage, specifically in silver, but then there seemed to be silver continuing to come out. Yep. So that sort of went away. We had that silver squeeze in February. And, uh, you know, when, when these guys, God bless them, the Reddit crowd or Wall Street silver crowd, and went in and everyone was going to buy silver. And I went out and bought physical silver myself. They said, buy X amount. And I bought three or four times that. And <laughs> <laughs> right. I count the support was going on. And silver started to go up. And you had these other stocks, you know, they, they talk about all the time, GameStop and AMC, they're going berserk. And, my niece has never traded before, made a fortune in it, and a lot of money anyway, not maybe not a fortune, but she did great. I'm seeing it in silver and watch. Maybe they could do the same in silver, which there was supposed to be a shortage anyway. Right. BP Morgan and Ally said, no, not a chance. You had gold spiked to 30, straight down again, right back to 26. And it's actually, it's done nothing since this great effort was made by these people. And it just shows the power of the bad guys and what they're able to do. Well, you can have other markets, like then, like you said, what they talk about this GameStop and other of these shares that have gone ballistic, gone absolutely bonkers, and it, it just doesn't make any sense. And then you got silver that's supposedly in the shortage to begin with. They go extra hard to do the same with silver, a big flop. And that's what we're dealing with. Do you think it's on some sort of a, um, a computer algorithm or something, what's keeping these prices so, so steady? Well, it's a very good question. I mean, exactly how they do it. We know they're doing it in the paper markets and it could be an algorithm kind of thing or whatever. But basically, you know, I call it their, their bugler goes out and the, the bullion banks 
that sell this stuff, just go on out and sell at the same time at certain prices, drop it down. Oh. Uh, they wait for the specs to come in like today in the gold market because gold should have soared today with the dollar getting killed and interest rates uh, collapsing. And, with, and it, naturally, the gold price took off. Yay! They just said like this. You watch. You yeah. watch. Bombs away, like every other day. Sure enough, today, bombs away, straight down. <laughs> and it's getting to people. Look how I'm talking about it. It's getting to me. I mean, every yeah. day. And yeah. they get away with it. And uh, they, they, because of their shenanigans, it's affected the physical markets. A lot of people that want to buy are shying away because they can see what's going on. Yeah. And, you know, when those huge institutions and the government kind of looks the other direction um, or acts like it's not happening. It's one of those things where there's so many things that are going on right now, right in front of us and right in front of the American people where logic, your brain tells you something is very, very strange. And yet the institutions, the media, all of the big players tell you, no, nothing's going on. Everything's fine. And you know what I mean? So the American people, so many people realize this. And this takes place on all levels. It takes place with, you know, elections, um, social media, censoring people. Oh, no, that's not happening. Think of all those hearings on the, you know, on the Hill. Oh, no, we don't censor anyone. Everyone on social media knows you're being censored, knows if you say certain things, you can be taken off. And it happens in even in the gold and silver industry, which is very, very interesting and shocking to me. There was a silver person, there's a big silver person who, um, I'm not going to say his name because I don't want any more trouble coming his way, but he actually had a couple different shows taken down because he talked about the silver manipulation. Yeah, well, it's, uh, uh, again, having dealt with it with two decades uh, and and what my colleague Chris Pell does and sending stuff to the media and what we try to present to them, uh, we just won't get mentioned. I won't mention <coughs> names either, but trying to get some more coverage for God, and I'm just getting no place. I mean, they'll put on critics of ours all the time, but they won't, they won't allow us to be heard or, or, or watched. That is so amazing to me. I mean, because people know about it in other industries. They just don't realize that even precious metals, the fact that this is happening behind the scenes, it's being very much manipulated. Bill, I want to ask you about the ratio between gold and silver. You see the fact that when physical metals start to dwindle the amount, we don't know when that's going to be, that's going to um, accelerate the prices way up, right? Talk to us about the ratio between gold and silver. There are a lot of people that predict a parity that it could come very close to one to one, which makes silver an amazing investment. What are your thoughts? Well, it's funny. I mentioned that the other day. Every time I looked at the gold silver ratio for the last couple of days, all I had to do was mention it. The gold silver ratio had a 68 handle, meaning gold was 68 times higher than silver. Every single day was 68, 68, 68. It just rallied up the past couple of days. Uh, but it, the norm, I think, or what it's, a lot of it, I mean, it might be 30 or 40, but it's been this 15 uh, in the past. So the potential for silver to gain on gold uh, is, it's all there, but it's been there for a while. It's not nothing new. I mean, they just have been able to keep the silver, the silver price, what I call it, like a dungeon. I mean, it just, it, no matter what happens, the news, it, it's not allowed to go up. I mean, people can just look at a chart. It's just like this. So at some point, when they hit the wall with the physical market again, it, it'll be in both gold and silver, but especially silver, you can see that ratio go down to 15. Do you think that'll happen overnight? How fast do you think that would take place? <laughs> it's a great question. I think the move will start overnight. Uh, it'll be a, it'll be a process uh, uh, unless there's some sort of reset or something like that. But I think it will go up once you get silver about thirty. It'll just explode. Hmm. There you go. That's why I, I was looking for an indicator. So you feel like once we see thirty, we're gonna get now, You know, 30. it topped out at thirty-two a couple months ago. No, it was thirty. Was it thirty? Yeah, it was thirty. It's been at 30 a couple times, and it was 
there on the silver spike and the silver screen thing in February. And I forget, maybe, maybe it was then or the last time, but it was, it was thir- it's been topped out twice at 30, I believe. I know it's, it's not, not might have gone up a pennies higher than that, but basically it's got to get about 30. And what you have, again, if I may, there's an enormous base in silver, I mean, from a technical standpoint, going sideways and sideways and sideways, you know, for the, you know, for the longest time, it's what I call a base. So it's, that gives it tremendous support for when it does get about 30, that can fuel it up to 50 very quickly. Oh, wow. Go into that a little bit more for us. That's really interesting. Well, again, it's just bases and markets, they, they build a power. That's what a base is. And when it breaks out of the base, there's power to fuel a market price higher. And, you know, you've had cheapers. You had silver at 50 uh, 10 years ago, and you had silver at 50 40 years ago. I mean, big deal. <laughs> <laughs> what You know, what market isn't where it was 10 years ago? Right. So it's going to happen, you know, probably when we least expect it. But there's a lot of power being built up in the market, and I think that's what's going to fuel the silver price. And 50 ought to be the first of 100 is what I'm looking for. Right. And again, you don't have any timeline for us because of this whole strange situation. Yeah, well, I mean, I've been looking for silver to start to go to 100 for years. So <laughs> my, my opinion there has been worthless. I mean, it's almost an embarrassment. <laughs> but, it's uh, like where it should be. It should be at 1,000, but it's too. I'm not, I'm not giving up. It's just I'm just angry and frustrated. Right. You know what? I, I want to touch on fiat for a moment. You mentioned it, um, the printing by the Federal Reserve. Um, before we go, how has that performance affected precious metals, if at all? Because it is very strange that the fiat is losing power right in front of us and precious metals are not gaining um, in price, which is, it's almost like the first time in history something like this has happened. Well, again, if I may, the, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it's the central banks and the bullion banks behind the rigging of the gold and silver prices. And if they want to, I mean, we know how much money has been printed just by the numbers, it's into trillions of dollars, and it's just crazy. And it's going into the, the money's going into the stock market. And it's, it's, you know, it's keeping interest rates low. I mean, the yield of the 10-year note went to 1.25% this morning uh, at one point. I mean, and th- if they want to stop the gold price from doing it any particular day, they can call up the bullion banks and send the banks and say, be at the bank for the national settlement. Let's raise the dollar 20, 30 points. Big deal. And if they're going to sell gold and silver at the same time, they can do it. So that's why, again, you've got... Gold hasn't gone down this year. Uh, silver is going nowhere, a little lower, but going nowhere. And yet you've got the stock markets until uh, today or yes, at all-time highs. And other assets have taken off too. I mean, copper had a big run. Lumber went berserk for a while. You've had oil went to six and a half year highs the other day before selling off. You've got one market after another going up. Gold and silver, no. And it looks, it is spooky because it is, it's funny. It's, and it's all going to change. I just can't tell you when, or your listeners and watchers when. Well, we're ready for it. You know, that's a really good point um, for everybody to really absorb the fact that we're listening to the fact that trillions and trillions and trillions are coming out into the market, into the market. No one's seeing it. Someone's seeing it. The stocks are seeing it. The stock market is seeing it. The industry are seeing it. Our money is being printed to artificially prop up those entities of the stock market and so on. It's not being printed for the good of the American people. In fact, it's being printed into worthlessness to keep everything artificially so that President Biden or whomever is in power, and that's the truth, can come out and say how healthy we are right now. That's right. What's your best advice before we go for investors in this um, economic uh, market? Well, I'll have some cash in case we get a I, I'm just petrified what could happen if we ever get a market tobacco on the downside, which some people predict, some people don't. It could keep on going, but it has some cash on the sidelines in case something terrible happens. And uh, look to take advantage of the dips in the gold, silver, and the gold, silver share market and pick some up if you don't have somebody. Because the fundamentals for the 
and the, the, the shares, as I call them, in the gold silver markets have been just horrible lately. And people are quitting left and right, and it's going to be a tremendous opportunity for those people that can hang on, but don't be on margin. Right. So the best advice really is to appreciate this suppression and take advantage of it. Exactly. And, you know, don't overdo it, of course, but uh, and have some cash and, and uh, you know, stay comfortable because we're, we're, we're in a wild time now where anything can happen. I mean, uh, no one's, you know, there's some people calling for a market crash, but the ones that have been calling for one for some time now have been wrong. And yet it could happen out of nowhere. That's when it usually happens. So it's just not to panic. You'd be in position to uh, stay comfortable. Wonderful. Well, it is always amazing to have you here. Please tell everyone where they can go to learn more about GATA and how to follow your work. Well, they can go to GATA.org and sign up for a free, uh, free, a free email list. My colleague, Chris Powell, did a great job. And I've got a website called The Metropole Cafe, TheMetropoleCafe.com. People can sign up for a two-week free trial and see if, if what I have to say on a daily basis is of value. And, Hopefully, it's going to be more upbeat than it's been. Right. <laughs> well, I try Let's to tell on. the truth. I try to tell it the way it is, and it just has been really lousy all year. Yeah. yeah. Well, we will watch what happens with a lot of interest. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. We will have you back soon. Thanks, Michelle. Look forward to it. Absolutely. Mr. Bill Murphy, chairman, director, and founder of GATA.org, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. For the Industry Experts Panel, I'm Michelle Holliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com.